Anyways, let's get started, honey. I just watched the Cardi, Card Bardier Cardi uh, video, and it's really cute. Very cute, very colorful, very sexy, cute wardrobe selections. Um, pretty good. She had Offset in the video. I heard she just signed with um, his management or Migos' his management as well. She had a lot of product pay placement in the video. Beats, EOS. Who else? Lift. Product placement. Pay me. You wanna you wanna be in my video? Pay. Us. That's good. It's cute. Cute video. Okay, so what's going on? I don't know if I should have my glasses on. You get a glare, but I can't see shit when I look into my phone. Cardi got rich, they upset. Yeah. Okay. We'll get this motherfucking started, Cardi. Okay, you wanna talk about, let's talk about, first we're gonna do the Real Housewives of Atlanta review. Okay, because I came on yesterday. And then we're gonna do Real Housewives of Potomac. Then we're gonna talk about Black China. Then we're gonna talk about Fabulous and Emily B. And shout out to Winnie Mandela, passed away. And shout out to Marvin Gaye anniversary of his death all right if you don't know who any mandela is i don't have anything for you should probably shouldn't be listening or watching this telecast all right so let's first talk about um it's too much too first of all it's too much glare let me show you these glasses oh shit they're too far and i don't feel like going to get them they're so cute, but I like the way that they are, they're tilted, like the frame and like this is tilted, like the lenses are tilted, like going at, at a slant diagonally. It's like they're like this, you know what I'm saying? They're already down like this for your girl. Who get this motherfucker started? Now they making a whole bunch of noise. That's the reason why I didn't want to record right now. You hear all that noise? I feel like yelling, keep the goddamn noise. No respect. No respect for a young hustler. That's hella loud. So what was I talking about? Let me find my tweets for um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. So I, these are my notes because I live tweet or kind of not really live tweet, but kind of tweet. Um, trying to watch it at the same at the same time. Anyway, so they first they come back. Um, oh, with Sheree. I think they're showing Sheree. Um, hold on. Start off with Kim, not Kim, Sheree, not Sheree, Ace and his mama and Eva at the pumpkin patch. And I have a party for fucking um, Eva because her birthday is the day before Halloween. So they're going to have a party for her. And so they decide to have a Halloween party. She says she really goes all out when she's in LA. So she really wants to have a party in Atlanta. And um, they are inviting Portia and Kim. She's with uh, Nene, Kenya. It's really, I think Kim really has a problem with everybody. Even her little comment that she made at the Halloween party about Eva was kind of like, where did that come from? But it just proves the type of person that she is. Um, here's Sheree. She has, um, her, everybody, not everybody, nobody really came. Nobody's really fucking with you. Not even Kim came. Cynthia and Candy came to your house. Candy came because she's nosy. And Cynthia came because that's the type of person she is. She don't want to make you feel like shit. Nene wasn't coming. Kim didn't come. Portia didn't come. Sheree probably s spent some money that she did not have in order to give these girls some massages candy was like no thanks i'll just have a hand massage i'm good i'm not about to take my clothes off in here in your basement that's not about to happen here we're not cool like that and good thing so, sheree every time she says something about somebody it's always really really unnecessarily shady where did that come from like all the shade that she's throwing to 
everybody in her confessionals. It's really like unwarranted. It's like it's no, it doesn't, I don't know what her objective is or I don't get it. It just doesn't seem like it's timely. Like it's just unnecessary. Well, anyways, no one comes to the basement. This is this is the problem that I have with Sheree. And y'all know that I don't care about Sheree. Y'all know, and I will say, I'll probably say it every time I talk about these Real Housewives. Sheree is the only one who has not done anything with her platform in the 10 years that she's been on there. Well, she was on there from season one through four. And she's been on, I think, the last three. So that's seven years. Kenya said you have fashion, a fashion show with no fashions and a cave, man cave with no man. Talking about Kenya and her man and if he's real or not and shading his nose ring. I, I don't know any man. There, there's one clip of Sheree when they do their after show where she's saying, I don't know any man that just always wanted a nose ring. Likelihood of Kenya's man being gay or having gay sex versus your man Sheree having gay sex or being gay is your man it's locked up with all the men so it would actually be him he would be the one see that her unnecessary shade is just like first of all you shading people and really setting yourself up for the ultimate shade and the ultimate read you keep saying how kenya's man is is non-existent or we don't know if he's real or not we don't know if your man is real. We don't even know if that is your man. Or are you just saying that's your man so that you can hold that money for him that he's been having you hold? That's the only reason why Sheree is fucking with that dude. Anyways, um, they move over to Portia and kind of, um, actually, I think I fast forwarded through um, Portia's part because I really I'm not here for Portia. I fast forwarded. Um, I think I got to the part where they were. Um, went to the play Cynthia and Kenya if I was Kenya I wouldn't have gone but she did it because she did the PSA or came to the PSA the domestic violence PSA PSA she came for her so Kenya even though Kenya doesn't get along with Vivica because Vivica created a beef between her and Kenya when they were on the celebrity apprentice apprentice she was the only one that would she could have a believable beef with that could actually make it to social media and people would actually care. So uh, Vivica, and like Kenya said, her face looks horrible. But Kenya went nevertheless and she was like, <laughs> when they went, when it was all over and she, Kenya was so shady this episode. She was saying, um, you know, the um, Portia plays Connie. So um, from two can play that game. Portia's in the play, two can play that game. Um, and she plays Connie, which is like the girl who is like very liberated sexually. And so Kenya makes a comment saying, you know, it's not too far off to play um, someone of that character. It's not too far off. Like Portia can play that. She goes back to the room. This was a funny part. I don't know if anybody caught it, but Kenya was like, that was so much fun. <laughs> it was not even, it wasn't even her like saying, oh, your acting was great. The music was, I don't even know if it's a musical. And <laughs> Kenya's ass is stupid. Anyways, so they went to the to the, the um, Halloween party. The Halloween party was the, you know, the closing. This was the season finale. A series. No, season finale. It needs to be the season finale because unless they come back with a whole group of women, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be able to put the energy into this because it's just nothing that gets resolved. Nobody is really friendly. Um, and the people who are friendly, I mean, what what are they doing? You know what I mean? So it's not really fun anymore to talk about the Real Housewives of Atlanta because it's not, I don't know, it's not that fun. I'm, I can't wait till this reunion though. Now the reunion, now that's something that I think I can always go and watch because the reunion is just going to give you a recap of what happened in the season and they're going to talk about the major points that happened in throughout the season and the questions that people had and what got the most views or what was talked about the most that makes more sense to me than going through all of this anyway so let's talk about their halloween costumes 
Eva was Cleopatra, Sheree was Cheapapatra, and Kenya was a Victoria's Secret angel. Portia was a zombie bride. Cynthia was 50 Cent, which was really, 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 really cute. I, she did a wonderful job with that. She had the fucking, the um, bulletproof vest. She had her Tims on. I was like, come on, Cynthia. It was really cute. And then Kim was a Playboy bunny and Croy, Confederate Croy was um, Hugh Hefner. So, like, two things y'all would never, ever, never, ever be. Like, you really living in a fantasy. Miss Kim. Did Kim ever pose for Playboy? I think, was she ever, like, approached or anything like that? She looks totally different. Kim's face is, like, it looks like a melted mayonnaise sandwich on white bread awful like her face her lips somebody said on twitter that her lips look like two pink tires they are so fucking ugly look they're ugly nini comes in as pest control and greg comes as the roach greg roach leaks <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to stop. I can't laugh. I can't laugh too loud because I don't want to disrupt the people. Although they was disrupting me. God damn it. But I thought that was so funny. I thought that was in for Nini to take a cruel, ill-intended joke meant to, I don't know what the purpose of the joke was, but to make Nini, I guess, look like she's dirty or she doesn't keep a clean home. It's just insulting and then to say that it was roach but nini took a fucked up joke and made a funny original i a costume idea for it and kim couldn't she couldn't honey kim was so sick she was so sick well good she needs to have that everything well good that's well I, uh, uh, good. she was so it was so funny because she was so mad that everybody was laughing like like the joke is on like nini said the joke is on you you tried to make this fucked up joke and now you look like the fool i can't wait until the reunion until they drag that ass the part that i wanted to talk about was when this is eva's party and was in a church and kim walks in first thing she says i don't know about this being in a church bitch it's a halloween party what's the that's like like the best thing the best place to have a halloween party is in a church or a fucking graveyard there's dead ghosts and souls and whatever the else is lurking around and caught in between or whatever so that's like the perfect place to have it in a church or a graveyard for her to come in and start complaining, bitch, this is a Halloween party. You're not that fucking religious with the evilness that you spout every time you get around these black women. I don't fucking care. So they walk in. She's immediately complaining. They like Eva comes over to like greet them. And it's like, oh, you know, you know, hi, whatever. As soon as she walks away, she first of all, they didn't know that it was like a shock that Sheree was Cleopatra. Nobody remembers Sheree's costume. That's how memorable it was. First of all, you had a diamond coming down the middle of your head. Girl, by, I don't know who helped her with her. She looked like she got that at Party City. No effort, nothing. Motherfucking Marlo, that is the motherfucker who came through with BAPS with the patent leather orange jumpsuit with that fucking hair. She did that. She, her, she had the best costume. Um, Kenya, she could have done better. Hers was predict. It was like predictable. Like she was beautiful, a beautiful Victoria's Secret model. But it was like, like I liked when she remember when she came as the Grinch and that their little Christmas party. She came and that was like perfect. Like that was thought that went into that. I mean, I'm sure there's thought that went into a Victoria's Secret model. But you can go buy some black wings and some black negligee and lingerie and fishnets anywhere you know what i'm saying so i don't know i thought like that's the same thing the same thing with kim's costume that doesn't take any amount of creativity to be a playboy bunny or hugh hefner what he should have done was 
be a sportscaster to reflect out of work NFL players and what they do next. That's what Corey should have came as. And Kim could have came as an alcoholic. What they could have came as was driving Miss Daisy. But see, if Croy walked in that motherfucker with blackface, that would have been better. I don't know. But I don't like, um, I don't like Kim. I don't like anybody. As soon as they are walking up, uh, what's her name? Confronts, um, Portia. Sheree confronts Portia because Sheree said that Portia, um, Shamia told uh, Sheree that Portia told her, don't trust anybody in the group. Um, that's really good advice. That's probably the best thing she's ever said this whole season. We didn't hear her say it, but um, did they show? They usually show a clip of them. They've been really good at showing clips. I think they're really getting better with showing receipts about when people say something versus when they lie or something like that. You know, I think it's really good that they do that now. What did she say? Um... She said that don't trust anybody. And then she said, even Sheree. And then she said, even, no, Sheree asked me, even me. And she said, everybody. So Sheree was offended. And I don't know why she would be offended because Sheree really doesn't have anybody's back but her own. Because when it's time to to set the record straight, Sheree either, I really don't know what she said, but um, I mean, I'm just saying what I heard what she said. I don't know what that, and she never has an opinion. She never can pick a side she can never say this was wrong or this was right it's always I'm just her her thing is like I'm just I'm just taking it back to the girl because they're saying it behind each other's back but see that's really like it's fake because you're not saying it behind the back there's a camera here she's gonna see it so or if it's not edited and cut and and added or or used in in production they can always come back because I'm sure they keep everything. They're not throwing anything away. So for her to be like, I'm just letting everybody know what each person is saying about each other. No, you're not because you're And furthermore, you're not going directly to that person. You're going to somebody else and saying what somebody said and then going to that person. So you're really like spilling tea everywhere. And it's not something that you should be proud of at a 50, as a 50 year old woman. Like that's nothing that you're just gossiping for nothing. And they're eventually going to say it, or you're going to see it later. You're not being responsible by, or holding people accountable by going around telling what the next person is saying as if the other woman doesn't have the pussy to come back and be like, yeah, I said that. So you're not really doing anything but keeping a bunch of shit stirred up. And that's your only purpose in this fucking show this season. Sheree confronts Portia. When she confronts Portia, Portia's sister is standing right there, which is perfect. And as soon as Portia's sister starts speaking up for Portia, because they know that Portia doesn't... Portia and Sheree, I, I can't even see that being a productive argument because neither one of them have the vocabulary to have a good actual argument. Sheree talks super duper fast, sounds like somebody's pressing the mute button as she's speaking. And we all know that Portia doesn't have the words. She's not very bright. So she resorts to fighting. We have never seen um, Sheree fight, but we have seen her not be able to have a productive argument rewind to Africa with Marlo and all of that all of that bullshit that they were doing they couldn't have a productive argument because Sheree doesn't have the words neither does Portia so Portia's sister whose name escapes me uh what's her name um I don't know her name Damn it, I can't remember her name. But her sister um, steps in and says, um, um, what did she say to her? She says, um, she's like s talking for her. And um, Sheree says, well, I wasn't talking to you. And she says, I'm talking to you. And then Sheree says, well, you better tell your sister to be quiet. Portia said, no, nah, she's good. She basically, she can say whatever the fuck she wants to say to you. That's my fucking sister. And you coming at me and everybody knows how I get down. I don't like no people pointing at me. I don't like anybody in my face. And you want to come up me and 
confront me at a fucking Halloween party about me saying not to trust you. So I should trust you and you're going to come up. You're so I should trust you because you're going to come up to me and confront me in front of all these people instead of bringing me and pulling me to the side. And you think if you pull me to the side that my sister is not going to come with me, you got another thing coming, bitch, because I don't trust anybody here but my motherfucking family. So Sheree tried to, you know, get loud with them and they broke it up. I don't know how they they walked away. Um, they walked away. Then Marlo started fucking with Portia. And the reason why everybody's fucking with Portia is because Portia is not apologizing. And everybody keeps saying, how many times you want to apologize? Because her... When you apologize to somebody, then you go right back to acting stupid with them. Not even just shady stuff, like being extra and they want an apology. Like, like Portia had had, she has an issue. The way that she tried to make it seem like Kenya was always a problem. Kenya did this, Kenya did that. Portia has had an issue with every person on that panel. I think the only one who hasn't had an issue with every single person is Cynthia. Cynthia had a problem with Portia. She had a problem. I don't think she's had a problem with Candy. I don't think she's ever had a problem with Candy. I don't think she's, and she, her problem with Kim is like, these, pro, they're all make-believe. Kim doesn't have a problem with any of these women, really. She just knows that her presence is annoying and that anything she says is going to be annoyed she's just going to be annoying so she brings that negativity and not and then when she anyways let me get back to marlo marlo and um marlo goes up to portia tells portia you know i apologize you know we didn't you know in barcelona I haven't seen you in since barcelona blah 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 so portia starts to walk away from carol city florida but she starts talking to portia Portia is not trying to hear what she has to say. Portia runs away. And at one point, I think Marlo stepped on her veil. It's like, girl, why are you following this girl around? She doesn't want to talk to you. It's obvious It's obvious that Marlo was trying to provoke the girl. It was very clear by her following her around. Nobody does that. What else happened? Um, they ended up taking a group picture. I don't know why Kim was in the group picture. I, I just know that next week when we see the reunion, first of all, why the fuck does Portia have him on a crown? Portia wants to be Kenya so badly, y'all. I don't give a damn what you say. I can't wait to hear her ex her reasoning, not excuse, but her reasoning as to why she has a crown on with a fucking cape. I don't get it can't wait to see what Sheree lies about I don't know what, what's gonna happen I don't know and I'm what why is Kim yelling at Sheree saying all them motherfuckers need to apologize to the world why because they got on you for being a negative bitch when she walked away when Eva walked away from Kim and Croy they asked Croy something about how do you feel about something he said I don't have any feelings when it comes to these women like I don't know, Croy. I think you need to just just be quiet because if you don't watch out, Nina's gonna call you a bitch like she called Peter a bitch. But I'm trying to figure out why. I'm trying to figure out how is Kim gonna flip this to be the victim? You know what I'm saying? You know, in the typical typical white woman, that's what they do. They call a bunch of shit and then all of a sudden they just, I didn't realize and there are these aggressive black women are against me. Ones that you call roaches, bitch. Saying so you had roaches, people had roaches. That's not cool. I cannot wait. Kim's lips are a fucking mess. And if she says to anybody that she has not, she, she has fillers, bitch, that is not, those are not fillers. That's a new goddamn lip in there. That looks a fucking mess. Anyways, that's all I have to say about Real Housewives of Atlanta. And we are going to pause for the calls. But go ahead and like, subscribe, comment. Let me know that you stopped by. This is for Real Housewives of Atlanta. Last episode, season finale, season 10 finale. Go watch it. Let me know what you thought about it. And I'll be right back.